longest cardiac arrest I've ever been a part of resuscitating is probably on the upwards of three hours. For this week's tip of the week, we're gonna be talking about some cardiac arrest causes as well as tips. As an ICU nurse, I have been involved in a lot of codes, um, both in the ICU and outside of the ICU. I think the longest continuous code I've ever been a part of, like doing continuous compressions is probably like an hour-ish. And then I've also had codes where like a patient has coded, we've gotten them back, they've coded again, gotten them back, coded them again, multiple times that has been over like a period of like three hours. When you're performing CPR, you want to make sure you're doing a compression rate of about 100 to 120 compressions per minute and to the depth of at least two inches. This is for your average adult patients. You also want to make sure you're allowing for full chest recoil. That means after you push down, you are allowing the chest to fully expand back up. This helps with the perfusion of the blood throughout the patient's body. Whenever someone has a cardiac arrest, the first things that we are trying to figure out is why did this happen? Sometimes it's super obvious, uh, other times it's not. Sometimes it's a multitude of all of these things and sometimes it's just one of them. But immediately whenever you are in a CPR situation, the provider as well as the other nurses that are there are going to be trying to brainstorm as far as what happened, what caused this. I love this little graphic because it talks about all of the H's and T's, which are the main causes of cardiac arrest. And this is part of the ACLS algorithm. Let's quickly go through these. So we have hypovolemia. This could be either hypovolemia from fluid loss or blood loss. Hypoxia or hypoxemia also can cause cardiac arrest. A lot of times you will see the patient's oxygen sats drop, and then you'll see that blood pressure follow right along with it. And then that heart rate drop as well. Hydrogen ion excess. This is your acidosis. This is a metabolic issue going on. Typically these patients have a very acidotic pH. Low potassium or high potassium can also cause cardiac arrest. Usually you're going to see some ECG changes prior to the patient having a cardiac arrest. Patients that are too cold can also have cardiac arrest. Now over to the T side. First we have tamponade. Cardiac tamponade is where that pericardial sac, I hate using that word, sorry, I don't like that word, um, fills up with fluid or blood, preventing the heart from adequately pumping. Toxins, this is like your overdose patients or patients that consume a bunch of toxins. It's going to be, depend on what the toxin is as far as how you're going to treat it or reverse it. Pneumothoraxes also can cause cardiac arrest. Again, you got that hypoxia that follows. Thrombosis, that can be pulmonary or coronary aka cardiac. So think your PEs and your MIs. These are some of your main causes of cardiac arrest. If you have more questions, let me know. Um, I'm happy to talk more about all of this stuff and cardiac arrest in general, because I know they can be a very scary, intimidating thing, especially when you're not used to them. So let me know.